So this technique is the pelvic diaphragm or pelvic floor release. For this technique, you want your patient supine with the knees together and the feet apart. And the landmark for this technique is the ischial tuberosity. So you want to bring your hand flat and perpendicular to the long axis until you contact the ischial tuberosity inferiorly. You want to keep the, in the ischial tuberosity in your hand the entire time. So once I make that contact, now I'm going to turn the corner and I'm going to reorient my hand more with the longitudinal axis and I'm going to gently contact the tissue of the pelvic floor and then I'm going to advance my hand superiorly as far as the tissues will allow. As soon as I find a barrier, that's where I'm going to stop. And I'm going to use the respiratory mechanism to augment this treatment. So as the patient inhales, there should be an inferior push onto my fingertips on the pelvic floor. If it is very dysfunctional, we may not feel any tension change with the respiratory mechanics. So I'm going to continue my superior force until I can feel the tissues tighten and also I can engage that respiratory force. As the patient inhales, I'm going to resist any inferior motion. As the patient exhales, I'm going to gently take up any slack by moving my hand more superior into the ischioanal fossa. Wait until there's no more change and or a release is felt and then remove your hand. You can also repeat this on the opposite side by instead of using your fingertips, using your thumb on the ischial tuberosity. It's a little less precise, so you may want to go down to the other side of the table and use your opposite hand. One slight variation to this is to treat the obturator. Once you gain access into that ischioanal fossa, if you turn your fingers medially into the obturator foramen, you can more directly treat that obturator muscle, which may be useful uh, for internal and external rotation deficits. 